guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Big breaking news in the world of Warhammer 40k. Custodies can now be women. And the internet goes wild. I think that this is a welcome change. There's no actual reason why the custodies have always been men. They just always have been. And I uh, there's a rumor that some of the authors of the novels have wanted to do women custodies, but that Games Work the Games Workshop higher ups have always said no because the model line is all men, and so they just wanted to keep it consistent. The historically, the reason that there is no women space marines is because back in the days of Rogue Trader. There were two female space marines, or I guess women adventurers in power armor. Oh, what was it? Adventurer Gabs and Adventurer Mary or something like that. But they didn't sell well, and so that's why they pivoted to the, the current lore of space marines, where it's a brotherhood of guys, and they, they all go adventuring together, I guess. There's not... In, the, in 30k, it does make a lot more sense that it's all men. They do have some of that brotherhood dynamic and stuff. In 40k, it doesn't seem to matter at all. Even though Space Marines are supposed to be like psycho indoctrinated super soldiers who want nothing but to conquer the enemies of the Imperium, when you meet them in the novels, they're just guys with their own thoughts, feelings, and opinions on things. Which, and it almost makes you wonder like, when, when did they learn this in their decades of crusading? But it is very interesting. It's just a little snippet of, of lore text from the Custodes uh, Codex that has been leaked where there's a, a woman custodies character who's taking part in one of their um, like ritualistic training exercises where one of them tries to invade the Imperial Palace and all of the other custodies have to stop them. Which I always wonder, how hard did they go? Like, so she wants to plant a bomb in like the on the Emperor. Could she? I, I guess she couldn't possibly succeed because the custodies are so great, but they're not going to like kill her to stop her. So at what point is it a play fight and what point is it a real fight? It's kind of funny. There's also ridiculous custodies lore of like, they'll capture greater demons or champions of chaos and just let them loose in the Imperial Palace and then hunt them down. That seems needlessly risky <laughs> to actually, like, are we helping here? I guess the custodies are the best of the best of the best of the best of the very best. So there is no actual danger, but... It is, the custodies are kind of silly, but I do think it makes a lot of sense that women can be custodies because actually the, the custodies were made for two reasons. They were to be the personal army of the emperor who that could actually do anything the emperor needed them to do. And they were meant to be his personal friends, his companions. And so what's really interesting about the custodies is they actually are aware of the current state of the galaxy versus what it used to be. They have, they each learn the entire history of mankind and the history of the galaxy. And so they can actually see the difference between modern 40k and the golden age of humanity in the world of the 41st millennia. And so what it, it almost doesn't make sense that they're okay with it or they're willing to go on with it. In theory, they're getting telepathic communications from the emperor so they can do his bidding, but it's kind of iffy if Big E is still alive or not. It would honestly make a lot more sense, not just women custodies, but it would make a lot more sense if the custodies rebelled and took over the Imperium of Mankind. They totally good. 10,000 custodies could rule the Imperium. I guess the reason they don't is I guess Big E tells them not to, but honestly, they'd probably be pretty good rulers. Like in my my personal headcanon of what the Emperor's actual plan was, if you've read the Horus Heresy novels, it's pretty unclear, but I do think that the creation of the Primarchs and the Space Marine chapters or Space Marine Legions was to conquer the galaxy while the Emperor created the Webway portal. And then once he was, had completed the Webway and it, uh, faster than light travel was not only convenient but instantaneous, I do think he planned on using his custodies to murder all of the Primarchs and Space Marines and then just rule the Emperor, the rule the Imperium by themselves. Now, arguably, uh, I don't think anyone would be upset with this little fan theory I just came up with arguably incredibly way more blasphemous than women custodies. And yet people are mad about women custodies. And it kind of it kind of makes me wonder. I do think a lot of the outrage is people enjoying themselves because few things are as fun as complaining. Oh, and when you get a great opportunity to complain, it's so much fun. You get to be angry. You get to 
oh, your your heart rate gets to go up a little bit. Like it can be really, really fun to let off steam and to complain. But I always wonder when does it go too far or like when does it matter and when does it not? When does the author making a change to something you enjoy change the thing you enjoy so that you can't enjoy it anymore? I think that that's a really interesting question. It kind of comes into the question of like gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is something that happens in every community and it it's 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 it should be a healthy thing to do. Like the example I would give for good gatekeeping, what gatekeeping is, is sportsmanship. So like in airsoft, I play airsoft sometimes. Yeah, we, well, you know, little BBs travel 450 FPS. Yeah, the, you, there's a, you know, kind of an unspoken rule sometimes is written down. You do you don't shoot somebody in the beanbag. If you you nail them right between the legs, it hurts. It doesn't feel great. But and you, you shouldn't do it. And but sometimes it happens. We're all working together to have fun playing expensive tag. And so sometimes it happens. And so what you should do, my bad, bro, just real quick line. Instantly, as soon as you say that, all is forgiven, all is forgotten, because we're all working together to have fun. But if you're a douche and you keep doing it and you're doing it on purpose, everyone is going to work together to push you out and to stop you from playing because you're actively hurting everyone's enjoyment of the game. So that is, I would say that is an example of like healthy gatekeeping that becomes a lot more nebulous when it's something like enjoying a piece of fictional work. Where is that line of this is acceptable, this is unacceptable? It's really hard. Like what things are fun and exciting and new? What things are stupid and dumb and bad? Like, and then, and then at what point, how hard should you express your feelings? Like, it should be a dialogue, a conversation of where those lines are, but really it's the author's role to come up with the thing. And then it's the audience's role to either to see it and then think whatever we want to think about it. It kind of makes me think of like one time I was on Facebook in one of my Star Wars Legion groups and somebody shared a post. They really liked the from the uh, the not the Mandalorian show, the Boba Fett show, the biker gang, the punks. They really like the punks. And so they're like, hey, does anybody know any cool kits I could buy to make my punks? And, you know, you're hope they're hoping they're going to get a couple comments like, oh, you can use the IG-88 bikes. You can use the swoop bikes. That would be pretty good. Uh, maybe there's an STL online somewhere. What they got was 300 comments of people furiously arguing, saying the biker gang punks are dumb. And if you were a real Star Wars fan, you would know not to like them. Like, that's not fun. Nobody is, you're not helping anybody enjoy Star Wars or enjoy Star Wars Legion. Yes, everyone gets to say whatever they want always. But uh, is it helpful? Is it, is it bringing more fun and enjoyment to the hobby? That guy just wants some swoop bikes. <laughs> and now he's reading 300 comments about why Boba Fett was a bad show. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't, I don't quite get the appeal. And it's a very similar thing with the with Lady Custodes. Now, the reason that there's Lady Custodes, I do think is probably a little pandering because there is a rumor that other authors have wanted to do Lady Custodes and they've been told no because the model line is all was all men currently. It would have been more interesting if they were allowed, if they were given the yes so that they could write interesting stories where right now Games Workshop just did it. And hilariously, there's some guy at Games Workshop, who's responding to people's comments. And let's let's come up with a name for this character. Let's call him Sean. So Sean over at Games Workshop, he's responding to people saying, since the first of the 10,000 were created, there have always been female custodians. That's a dirty stinking lie. <laughs> that is not true at all. Is it a problem that they're changing it now? No. But that that's a dirty, like, JK, just kidding, rowling lie. That is not true at all. Is that it, the opinion of Warhammer? Not really. It's kind of more the opinion of Sean. But I do think that it could lead to some very interesting storytelling for the custodies. Because custodies aren't space marines. They're kind of just perfect humans. Lacking a little bit of, like, I guess, person... Not lacking any personality. They're all like perfect, immaculate Roman sculpture, artisan philosophers, geniuses. But it does seem like the Emperor has a lot more control over their free will than he does with the Space Marines. No custody has ever, ever fallen to chaos. But if, if, if two custodies were in love, 
that could be a really interesting way to have custodians do something wrong for a very understandable reason. So I do think it could lead to some really interesting storytelling. But yeah, it is hilarious the way Games Workshop is going about it, where they're like, uh, we always plan this. Always. It was always supposed to be this way. It wasn't. But it's I think it's really interesting that it is changing. I would have loved to have gotten new models like we're not getting them. They've already shown off the one new like, shield captain that we're getting for the custodies. And I think I think it has a helmet on, but maybe I don't remember if there's an alt with the helmetless head. It seems to be a man. So it seems to be just something that Games Workshop is doing for representation, which is a good and fine thing to do. But yeah, it would have been more interesting if there was some actual juice behind it. If there was a an interesting novel or an interesting story being told that necess necessitated this change as opposed to just making the switch. And <laughs> NP, oh, the way people are handling it. There's, I, mostly, nobody cares. But there's a, definitely some a vocal minority of people losing their mind who are like, I'm done with Warhammer 40K, let's boycott the company, let's burn it all to the ground, hashtag not my Warhammer. I don't think, number I don't think this, this change actually changes anything. And it is interesting to think about like, what, what is the company's responsibility versus my responsibility? Because I would say that I don't have any responsibility. My only goal is to enjoy something. I think a good example would be, I really like the character C-3PO from Star Wars, the gold guy, the robot. In the first movie, he's great. He's clever. He gets, the, he gets, uh, he tricks the stormtroopers twice. He tricks uh, Luke Skywalker into buying R2. He loves R2 at the end of the movie. He's like, I'll, I'll gladly give any of my parts to help R2 because he got all shot up during the space battle. He's a really cool guy. And the big thing about him is he's clever. Ever since that first Star Wars movie, he is a buffoon. Does that mean that Games Workshop hates me and they, they're not treating the character I love with enough respect? No. I still like C-3PO. I think he's cool. He's kind of funny in all of the movies since the first one, but he's never quite been captured exactly the way I like him that he is in that first movie. But that's fine because it's my responsibility to enjoy or not enjoy something. I don't really care for Lord of the Rings. I like Lord of the Rings. Seen all the movies. I read The Hobbit. I enjoy it enough, but it's not it doesn't it's not my, my jam like Star Wars or 40K is. And there's not a good reason for that. I just happen to like Star Wars and 40K more than Lord of the Rings. It's fine. <laughs> it's just my own personal opinion. So it's very, it's very interesting, the, the change to custodies and how it doesn't really change anything. A real change would be like the custodians taking over the galaxy or the Tau becoming a real threat or the, the Tyranids being revealed to actually be a, a multi-galactic spanning threat that is just going to wash over the galaxy like it wasn't there. Those are things that Games Workshop should probably never do. You can never have the Imperium just win. You can never have Chaos just win. Those are things that they can't do because it would fundamentally change the setting. Lady Custodes, not really, not really a big change. I can even bring up an example from 40K's history. I can bring up two actually. Necrons got changed. Before 5th edition, they were just spooky, ro like spooky Cthulhu-esque robots, an alien race that was enslaved by eldritch gods. Neat. It makes for a very fun little story. The codex was very small with actually only one very short story from the Necrons perspective. Everything else was just spooky stories of the other races encountering the Necrons. But the games actually decided to change them to an alien species with actual personality, which is so much better for the world of Warhammer 40,000, where these stories connect and these characters interact with each other. It's better to have actual personality in and flavor in that faction than just a really interesting spooky story or one of my personal favorite things the centurion war suits for the space marines i think they came out in 2016 or 2015 maybe a little earlier than that 2014 they were hated despised a space marine wearing another space marine suit is the dumbest thing this isn't 40k 40k is going down the drain going down the tubes they're my favorite thing. I love them. I have six. I would love six more, but I'd have to refinance my house. They're so expensive. You know, one thing I really, really enjoy, the idea of it might offend somebody else. I don't know. It's really, really interesting. I think I think some people could, could use a chill pill on being upset about the ladies, Lady Space Marines. I think some people are just enjoying, enjoying like 
being upset about lady custodies and it's not it does like in their true heart of heart it doesn't matter and they're still going to collect models and paint models and play 10th edition and enjoy the game it kind of reminds me of uh back in the day when games workshop did their famous warhammer is for everyone post which was a little pandery but I appreciated the sentiment because it did come right after that event where um, some jerk went to a convention wearing like an outfit that made everyone uncomfortable. And so everybody, everybody decided not to play him. And so Warhammer made uh, published a little article. One of the great powers of our hobby is its ability to bring people together in common cause to build bonds and friendships that cross divides. We believe in and support a community united by shared value of mutual kindness and respect. Our fantasy settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred or abuse in our company or the Warhammer hobby. We will continue to diversify the cast of characters we portray through miniatures, art, and storytelling so everyone can find the representation and heroes they can relate to. And if you feel the same way, whether and whoever you are, we're glad you are a part of the Warhammer community. If not, you will not be missed. It's just basically saying don't be a jerk. <laughs> it's kind of really what that whole post boils down to in very flowery language. And then a cute tag at the end using the last line of the first page of the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook. Uh, like, what is it? In the grim darkness of the far future, you are one amongst billions. It is the worst time imaginable. And the only thing for certain is that you will not, you're one amongst a billion and you will not be missed, is like the line, the famous line. And so they took that line and put it in the bottom of their post. Weirdly, a lot of people online have kind of taken that as a badge of honor, where they're like, Games Workshop was talking about me because I don't agree with some of the changes that they've made to Warhammer over the years. So this post is singling me out that they don't want me in the hobby. I don't think that's true. I mean, Games Workshop doesn't know who you are. They don't know who I am. They're just a company that makes models, games, and toys, and books. Like, it doesn't really... They do what they do. You are you get to do whatever you want to do. And that's kind of the, the long and the short of it. But I would be really interested to know what you guys think of, like, what is appropriate and respectful gatekeeping within the world of Warhammer 40,000. Obviously, it could still be sportsmanship. That's one thing I struggle with in Warhammer 40,000 is being a good sport. Oh, when Sean rolls his third six in a row for how many shots his Demolisher Cannon Lehman Russes get, and it's just going to annihilate my army, it's hard to not be like, that sucks for me, and be like, I'm glad that you get to have fun with your toys. That's what you should do, but it can be hard sometimes. But it's really hard to draw that line when it comes to the lore, you know, what things are allowed, what things aren't. You know, you're allowed to do Buzz Light Your Space Marines as long as it's a joke. You're allowed to do this. It's very hard. And Warhammer 40,000 is so expansive and the lore is so broad and dense that most things are canon. There are furry uh, Imperial Guard factions, like literally like cat suit, like cat people. There's weird alien species that nobody have heard of that are in the Tau Codex. Like there's so many things that would probably take you by surprise. Do last cannons have recoil? Half of the books say they do, half of the books say they don't. It's it's all a little bit of a mess, but that's what I really like about 40K is how dense the material is. And sometimes you can just focus on the characters and interpersonal interactions and just really enjoy the stories being told. Sometimes you can really deep dive on a very specific thing like needle weapons for like needle weapons for the Imperium and what they actually do. The Harlequin kiss that like throws out a microscopic hair that just sticks into your body and then wiggles around to cut you to ribbons. Like you can really get nitty gritty or you can get really broad. And I think that's one of the, the charms of 40K and makes it such an interesting universe to be inside of. And you know what else is really interesting to be inside of? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have a new set of Patreon terrain every month. And this month we have the Mining Colony Terrain and Vehicles. Utilitarian machines that are more than they appear, designed to ride across the landscape, firing stolen weapons, or tunneling underneath to lay traps. And the mines and containers make for thematic and useful terrain. The colony is ready to uprise. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here at Eon's Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. So please let me know in the comments below what you think of Lady Custodes, changes to Warhammer 40,000 in general, what does gatekeeping mean when we're all taking part in I guess a company's fictional story or where that line should be drawn to help most people have the maximum amount of fun and excitement that they can have in the hobby and what would be good gatekeeping. Let me know in the comments below. Please be respectful, but you don't have to be. That's just kind of how it works. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.